I was kind of in a hurry to get this project underway, but had to make a quick late afternoon run to the lumber yard to get materials that don't typically stock in my shop. In this case, it was black melamine. The melamine products have a particle board core and it's always a bad idea to cut it without a mask. I was in a hurry to split this first sheet, but I corrected that on my second cut. In my last video, we built the exterior panels and drawer fronts for this office furniture. Now we'll build the boxes, base, and file drawers for this project and install the panels and fronts. All cabinets and furniture consist of some kind of boxes and there are many methods and approaches for doing this. In projects like this, I have a go-to technique that I use that gives me good results and is quick and easy to build. I cut the panels and shelves out of the black melamine and then edge band them to get them ready for assembly. You can use an edge banding machine or with pre-glued edge banding, a regular household iron does a good job as well. I have this pocket hole cutter, which is a small shop production piece of equipment that has two routers. One cuts the slot uh, and the other drills a hole in the end of the panel that allows you to get the screw dead center through the end of the panel and into your side shelf. It's not necessary to use pocket holes for this, but it's a really quick and efficient method for me. Before I install the unit, I will add nailer strips at the back, which give you a way to attach the piece to the wall. It also gives the box more stability and helps to keep it square. Backs for the cabinets can easily be added, but in this case the units are going up against a finished wall, so I won't be adding backs. Something that's kind of a big deal to me is that, if at all possible, I like to have all the exterior of my projects be solid hardwood. A lot of my construction techniques are production oriented and I describe them sometimes as being a cross between furniture making and framing. So I think it's a nice touch to have the outer surfaces be hardwood. Here I'm building the base of the box and I have built it out of 3 quarter inch MDF. Then I've ripped down 7 8 inch thick pieces of alder and end up with about 3 8 inch thick pieces of solid alder to skin the outside of the base with. All I need to do from this point is to attach the base to the box. I do that by adding cross members to the base that I can run screws through to attach the two pieces together. I decided to install the base and stain and finish it with it attached. Normally I would pull it and spray polyacrylic finish on it, but instead I decided just to brush several coats of finish. The drawers on this project require quite a bit more planning than is typically the case. So I mounted the slides in the cabinet unit first just to get started. Because we have a finished height requirement of 30 inches, which includes an inch and a half thick countertop, that puts some limits on my drawer sizes. Now the drawers also have size requirements on their minimum depth because they're going to hold files in hanging file folders coupled with the fact that the file folders have to hang off a rail on top of the drawer. Well, let's just say there are lots of things to consider. I'll spare you all the measurement details and just say that I build drawers for this type of project from half inch material and use quarter inch thickness for the drawer bottoms. If the drawers get larger or need to handle heavier things inside, I'll switch to half inch bottoms as well. The melamine glues up very nicely and makes a very durable drawer. I edge band all the tops so everything has a finished look. Then the last thing I do to keep maintaining the squareness that I have when the final assembly is done is I'll go ahead and just run a bead of uh, glue around the bottom of the the drawer itself, kind of in the corner of the drawer bottom and the sides where my dado was cut out. Drop the glue in there and then take my finger and just smooth it out. And then don't disturb it till it sets up and then you end up with uh, this helping to just solidify the squareness of the drawer and keeping it in the same shape so that it'll be ready to put slides on and Hopefully we'll slide in very smoothly. With the slides on the drawers, the last step is to install the end panels and drawer fronts. The link in the upper right corner takes you to last week's video where we built the end panels and drawer fronts. That video also shows you how to install the black laminate on the inserts for the fronts. At this point we're starting to get an idea of what the final look of the cabinet will be at completion. 
I don't know about you, but I like the contrast between the laminate and the wood. To get the end panels installed, I clamp them in place and drill pilot holes from the inside of the cabinet. Then I use clear silicone behind the panels as adhesive and reinstall them, snugging them up to the box. Here's the way the file drawers themselves worked out. This unit is set up for lateral file storage, which allowed us to create additional storage space in the back of the drawer. We also built one other file storage unit where the files are front facing. The construction of the drawers created a situation where we needed a little longer screw to be able to attach the pull. The Dremel with a cutoff wheel comes in very handy for those kinds of tasks. So there's one style of office file cabinets that you may not have run into before. It's probably pretty likely you've never seen laminate used in that kind of way either. I hope you enjoyed the video and if so consider subscribing to my channel. I do a variety of things which means there's always something going on around Dobbs Workshop. Check in every week or so and see what you may have missed.